let's get started here. I'm playing against Nivik, who is uh, on Scorpion Phoenix, um, which to me is a scary build. People could say, oh yeah, crabs shouldn't have a problem with that. They got all kinds of saves and um, uh, whatnot, but uh, consumed by five fires, it can really take out a board, uh, a big board advantage uh, fairly quickly, and that's what crab relies on against Scorpion. I mean, they have very strong... Conf super strong conflict cards and their dynasties, I would say, equal to crabs. So I got to get ahead on board, or uh, and I got to do it fairly quickly. Uh, otherwise, the inevitability of the scorpion uh, dishonor game will overcome me. So I was, I tell you, I, to be honest, I was a little bit of a loss for overall game plan because they have fate worse than death to handle towers um, and other cards. And, um, as well as consumed by five fires, two copies to handle wide boards. So <laughs> I knew it was going to be a fairly tough matchup. Um, you know, obviously, crabs don't have as much problem with scorpion as some clans, but they still have pretty significant problems. I think everyone has problems. So my mulligan wise, uh, I decided to get rid of the witch hunter because this low fate, I wouldn't be able to fade it up and get another character. Um, and kept the Iron Mine just because Assassinate Scorpion runs three, so I want to stop that. So I kept the Keeper, of course. I just want to keep, put Keeper pressure on as soon as possible. Um, so I get Shudasuki and Ahita Guardian. Um, pretty good. Um, I keep the two uh, Conflict characters because it, I want to at least pass first once in a while against Scorpion, just to deny that. I can't let them get one more fate than me every single turn. So... Uh, I have no, uh, I have the Iron Mind, so I can buy the Yusuke here with uh, additional fate, try to keep it around. I mean, it's really good for card advantage and card selection against Scorpion, so I can uh, switch to lower bid if I have to uh, earlier or just keep up with him in cards. He buys a Liar, which I don't know how Scorpion always gets for <laughs> first turn, but it's definitely a hard mulligan for them for that. Uh, it's just it's just an excellent, excellent character. Threatens breaks. Um, so I, we both pop five and need some cards to start. I have the Finger of Jade. Uh, so even if the Iron Mind, uh, something happens to it, I can uh, stop the assassination with that. But then I have some relatively higher cost attachments. Spyglass, obviously very good. I don't know if Yusuke's the exact target I want for my tower, or but it's still good to have at this point. Scorpion passed first, uh, so they're you know ahead by three fate, but board-wise I should have a pretty good board going into next turn. So Nivik is thinking, uh, but what he wants to do, um, you know, crab provinces are not that scary, so he's kind of free to attack and nearly as scary as scorpion provinces. I have no intention of attacking at all. Just without fate on the rings, it's just not worth it to attack into a secret clan with the, that good of provinces. Um, so waiting on his action, uh, most likely I'll play the spyglass to start getting value from that. Because uh, even if he calls in favors, which he's running three calling in favors and three my mystics, so I have 21 attachments, so that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> All that attachment hate. I even if he calls in favors on me, um, not a big deal. Uh, but, you know, dishonoring the liar is not it's not a problem for him, but it's only the, the spyglass will only stick around one turn for him. So I wouldn't love it, but one less calling in favors for the reprieves and stuff later on, and the watch commanders, which is uh, pretty strong card against Scorpion. So I want to st stick a Spyglass. I want to stick a Watch Commander uh, and to try to get, you know, even up, the, I think, this matchup, which is probably, I mean, if I had to say, like, 40, 60 players of equal skill um, for Crab versus Scorpion, Scorpion having the edge. So I'll speed up a little bit here. Um, well, Nivik is thinking on his first. He passes. Um, I think about what I want to do with the Suzuki. You know, now I'm down four fate, um, which isn't terrible again because I'll have board. I'll have some board next turn. Well, he won't. I pass. Um, probably thinking about the finger of jade there, but it's not really worth it. So the iron mine was, and I knew this was on uh, meditation of the Tao, which I knew he was going to go after the iron mine. So that wasn't great. I mean, it's, he's tacking into you know a province that does absolutely nothing right now. I defend, um, which I, you know, barring any cards, I should be able to box and have an advantage here, at least for Scorpion to use some cards. Um, so yeah, so I, for sure I blocked the political because without barring conflict character, there's not going to be any um, military attack. So I drop a finger of jade on this Yusuke, which uh, oh, fate worse than death. I was worried about. Uh, then I choose rebuild because 
just want to make this guy assassin proof for as long as possible. So even if this this um to have a lot of protection for assassination, even if he manages to break this, but there's not enough political buffs barring a Kachiko. Uh or say like um uh, the Dishonored character. The, uh, I can't suddenly can't remember the name of it. Three cost character that makes Dishonored characters not contribute. Uh, barring those, either of those things, there's just not enough to break this. And dropping a, a character with fate on it against meditations would not be advisable. So uh, he dishonors my investigator. So he's winning the conflict on Void. Um, usually Scorpion likes Earth a lot, um, but during this game, it's pretty relentless on Void, and I think that was the right choice. A lot of, some people give up on Crab Boy and say, oh, it's just going to have this huge board. They have so many saves. But not if they can't get it started, really. So I drop a, a Wayfinder here and go on the attack. Um, I don't know if this was the correct thing to do. I mean, I'm giving Seeker Fate. I'm gaining a ring, which isn't a big deal um, here. But I have a Keeper, so that's, that's why I do it. But now I'm down to one. F now it's down to a six Fate um, disparity. Uh, and I'm only going to have sort of the one Shujusuki with no fate on it next turn. Um, and the Finger of Jade is starting to look like less and less a good idea, because I had the Iron Mind for whatever was going to coming up. If you fate worse than death me, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, although um, the Yusuki would have just disappeared, so that's a problem. But it looks, it's looking like a Finger of Jade won't really come into play at all. I attack into Pilgrimage. Uh, which is okay. I mean, he gets the Secret Fate for it. It's not great. Stretching the <laughs> Fate Advantage to seven. Um, but I can claim the ring. I don't necessarily... I mean, the effect would have been nice. Like, hitting Shameful would have been what I really want. Um, but at least I get the Keeper. And the Keeper's going to get me favor. Um, most likely. So, you know, I'm thinking about... It. So there's no conflict character comes down. There's no uh, Yojimbo. So I'm thinking, should I... So I take a second and think, should I go for the, should I pass this conflict and just guarantee favor and not tack into like a Scorpion province that does something? But I think, okay, maybe I hit Shameful and that'd be really great because at this point he has no defenders and I'll deny the Seeker Fate. So I deny the Seeker Fate. Of course, you know, I think he's running something like 10 conflict characters. So I don't know what I was thinking that <laughs> there wouldn't be something to aggravate this Shameful. Um, or he also could have just favorable ground into, in the, in the, uh, the liar and then made my keeper zero anyway so this was just a bad attack um in retrospect but it became a lot worse when he dropped his catch go he has two of them in the deck so you know it's not super lucky he found it but it's very bad luck for me um so he drops in his catch go uh so this conflict is way over um dishonors my keeper and uh at this point and he has you know uh honored catch go so you know might think, okay, well, maybe I can weigh the crab this if I had in my hand. But, you know, I'm sure he has four G dicks, or there's a good chance he has a four G dick and he's got a courtier to use it on. So I want to keep the assassination protection around, even though I have Finger of Jade. So it's a bit dubious not to keep the Wayfinder around just as an extra body, although Iron Man and Wayfinder is not the greatest. So uh, going to turn two, um, he's got a catch go board. I have two characters, one of which is Dishonored, not going to contribute much. Uh, so he's a much better board than me, and <laughs> I'm only up by one fate. Uh, kind of a theme going on here now is I'm wondering, just how did this happen? <laughs> I've revealed two provinces. That's kind of the only good thing that's happened so far. We're equal on, we're equal on board, I'm equal in hands, and I'm down by one fate. So, okay, let's see what happens. Uh, he flips um, two provinces. City of Lies, I think... It's a very underrated card. I know some Scorpions would think we're cutting it, etc., but just they have so many good, expensive events. It's such a good economy for them. Um, but it just did stop them from getting... I mean, you could buy the Shouju, but you know, you'd know you have to empty out all his fate, really, to put any decent amount on it. So I buy another Shurusuki, which is, again, pretty good. Um, I only I put one fate on it because I want to at least buy one other character, and I don't want to go too low on fate. And I have conflict characters to play, etc. So... Let me go one fate on the Yusuke. Um, with Iron Mind there, wouldn't be bad, but he can break the Iron Mind and probably um, forge GD or stop my rebuild of it. So just go one fate because I'm sure the assassination is sitting and it's burning a hole in his hand right now. Um, he's the first to pass. So, like I said, it's I find it the economic advantage of all those conflict characters to be a little frustrating sometimes because it's just so hard to pass on them. And they're just getting so much money uh, to pour into things. 
Uh, and, you know, the mono no Orari effect here that I'm going to have, uh, like, I'm going to only have one Shujisuki at the end of this turn, and he'll have a, you know, a catch go with a f with uh, one fate on it, honored. <laughs> so the fate disparity is there, and the board disparity will continue. Uh, I mean, I know I'll save. Up, hopefully the Iron Mind or something will stick so I can save the the other Shujisuki, but... So I'm first player, so that's an advantage now. I mean, a fate on rings, so I can... I think make more worthwhile attacks. So pull in the talisman. Um, no calling in favors have been used, so it's pretty dicey to use that. I don't have any really good characters that are guaranteed to stick around to put it on. But I do have court games for Catch Go. I do have um, a Cloud the Mind um, and a Ichi Wayfinder in hand. So that's pretty good news. So at least Catch Go is just not completely going to dominate me, although nine political is really hard to deal with. I take a peek, I find Secret Cash. Um, so I definitely don't want to attack there. I know the other one is meditation. So I know the other one is meditation. So let's remember that for what's about to come up. <laughs> At this point, I should know. Well, I wish uh, Jigoku would, well, I guess it's just, you're supposed to remember, but tell you like, I don't know, third province on the right or something. Uh, so I have attack. I'm trying to decide. Um, obviously, water ring's not useful. I cloud uh, catch go immediately and I attack I would imagine military fire. Um, we'll see. And I pick the right province, and then I second guess myself. Was that the one I wanted? And I end up going to Secret Cache, which I knew was there. So that was just a flat out mental error. Um, but they happen. Uh, I was thinking a whole bunch of things, and it just slipped my mind which province it was. And <laughs> talking to my Nivik about it, and he's saying he was—he thought I had some kind of strange master plan, having known it was there and going into it. But uh, so be it. He gets his—he um, gets his card. Uh, so that's not great. He goes to 15 cards um, to my 11. Um, but I do have two Shujisuki, so hopefully I, I will be able to use them here and uh get there so i'm still you know i mean this isn't a super strong attack i not entirely sure well, why i took the keeper um there uh, especially on a military attack i could sort it if the, something got assassinated or something so and i let the assassination through so i'm really hoping he just but he doesn't defend the conflict i mean i doesn't he doesn't really have to? I mean, a six strength catch goal is really not that much different than a nine strength catch goal against my board. So he assassinates the the itchy wayfinder. Um, so I have the rebuild. So I decide to um, let this stop this assassination, just to force him to use another card, uh, so that I can dishonor catch goal. Of course, I have to use another card to rebuild. Uh, on the spyglass, and there's some risk that I won't, uh, that that'll get forged and I won't be able to save the Shujisuki, but, so I rebuild it right away. Don't know if that's 100% necessary. Actually, that, yeah, not, not entirely sure. He censures that. Uh, it's one of his deck, but again, he's drawn pretty deep. Um, so that's really not good because I haven't found a reprieve yet, and he hasn't used any of his call in favors, so, I'm in risk of losing my best character here at the end of the turn, which is, you know, but really bad for my board state. Um, and on top of that, I didn't need to do that um, center. So, uh, I mean, really need, didn't need to do that rebuild yet. I could have waited for Kachiko to attack somewhere and then rebuild somewhere else. But so be it. Um, Goblin Sneak comes down, stealing my fate. And he's winning the conflict now, thanks to the favor. I have no characters with any fate. I do have swords, so I could sort up my characters to win this. Um, but, you know, I've already invested an iron mine into it. I'm down on cards. So I, let's see what I do here. I could just let it go. And again, nine, nine strength of six strength catch go is... I mean, I do have my box, and I do have two Shujisukis and a spyglass, so I can stop breaks of catch go here. Uh, but no, but catch go's clouded, so... Yeah, nine strength does make a difference. I mean, it really just... I can't possibly stop the break versus can't. And she's going to attack water, so not defending will cost me character anyway. 
Uh, luckily, you know, I mean, it would have been great to get away from the honor status and knock her down to three, but Dax had a shameful, shameful display, which is uh, pretty good for me. Uh, so I'm able to honor up the Shurisuki and get, get my Spygoss draw and the uh, Shurisuki draw, which actually equalizes uh, hand size. If there's no, and I have a finger of jade on this Shurisuki, so there's already been a assassination plate. So to be able to equalize the hand size here. Plus, uh, with box, prevent this break if he doesn't play any other cards, but you know, it's pretty likely he will. I have a fan uh, from Spyglass. That was also good luck. Uh, court games to probably trade court games with him. So it's looking okay for not to win, but a defense. Um, I choose another Spyglass. I'm hoping some, I'm going to start hopefully buying some more expensive characters that can't be assassinated, so I don't necessarily need Fingers of Jade, although. Always good to um, stop the fate worse of deaths. He plays a um, he plays a clarity of purpose, which means Kachiko's not going to bow. Uh, get a court games off on her. So the clarity of purpose is, I mean, pretty bad luck. So he's trying to play way of the scorpion. So he dishonors to win this attack, so he can stand up his sneak and do another attack. Uh, and, and with, although just okay. Although I do have a Shujisuki in box to defend, mm, so I can put use the fan here. So I have fan, I could put another spyglass on this character, but that would not be great, especially when it's going away at this point, possibly going away. Uh, he actually lost his forge capability and played his only center, so pretty good chance I can get this rebuild off. This other rebuild I have. Uh, so I decided not to invest in this character. Um, and he gets the goblin sneak up. Um, again, it's a question I'm just kind of questioning here too as well. Because I could have fanned. I just think with 10 cards, he probably had enough to win that even if I invest. Although I will be saving that character with Iron Mind. So the fan probably was worth it just to try and see. So I have to pass my conflict um, here just so I have a chance of defending this and not taking the break. And although there's no breaks yet, I mean, there's a pretty pronounced disparity of board, even if I do. Um, you know, if I save this Yusuke, it's a little closer, but still, uh, fate, plus four fate and a better board is, uh, the breaks are going to start coming soon because Kachiko is the main province breaker for Scorpion. And she's out on the board, right? So, so I pull a reprieve, which is good news. Um, uh, gets a, he has a bonsai for the uh, goblin sneak. I got some swords to stop this. Um, and he's going in void. So he's going in void um, again. Um, like I said, he's pretty relentless on void in this game which really works out for him because uh, the board just gets worse and worse when crab really needs to go the other way that's how crab wins <laughs> is that the board gets better and better for them by turn four plus you know they have this kind of dominant board but if it's a very good player he he knows that so he's trying to reverse that trend use you know his vantage that way so i i just i managed to stop the break if it passes um but in general scorpion is you know, it's, it's good and it's not. I mean, I don't have any breaks either, but in general, Scorpion's not going for breaks against Crab. They want to dishonor Crab out because Crab defends fairly well. They're not the best attacking clan. I rebuild over the uh, Heat of Guardian. He goes off because he's got no chance of stopping it. So at least I can save one of the Yusukis. Um, I could have used the Reprieve, but I was afraid of calling in favors. Maybe I shouldn't have been so afraid. Um, just have to go for it. Um, but he could have honored the sneak. I dishonored the sneak, which is no big deal for him. So he's going to go up to 14 fate with the possibility of buying shoju. <laughs> I mean, 10 is pretty decent for me, and a crisis breaker is fairly good against Scorpion. I mean, just kind of says they can't make their military attack, which is not a big deal for them, but it's nice for them just basically not being able to make it. So I flip Karata, which I would be happy about in a lot of matchups, but definitely not in this one. The only thing it is, the, the calling in favors I kept worrying about, um, or keep worrying about throughout this game, 
Uh, it does kind of reverse it. I can always just buy it back, which means they used a card, um, you know, equalized. I gave them the fade back. So they used a card and dishonored, and they basically got a fade out of it type of thing. Um, so I flip over Kasada, Satoshi, Crisis Breaker. So normally I would go for Satoshi here, but I just have no confidence of being able to win an Earth Ring <laughs> if I want. So, um, and Satoshi could pop for keepers. Um, that's what I would mainly use him for. But I'm starting to get pretty worried about this Shoju and the fact he's going to start breaking him. He's got Kachiko and Shoju. Uh, Kachiko is dishonored, but pretty good chance you're going to get re-honored at some point through a court games. So I pop down Kasada, um, and uh, at this point I just sigh because I know I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I know he's probably going to pass on me. Uh, get another fate. So that'd be like the third passing fate he's got. I mean, first turn I was second, so I don't know if that really counts. But I draw five here, um, and he switches the bid earlier than I suspect. Usually Scorpion will do that. You know, five five five, and then drop to one or three or two. So he switches around and takes me. It takes me down to five honor. It's not the danger zone yet, but I have a dishonored character, so that's really virtually four. Um, and I'm outnumbered, which means I'm probably going to take an unopposed at some point here if I want to do any attacks at all. Um, I do have a bunch of conflict characters, so that's one advantage. So I get my first way of the crab, but the goblin sneak and the potential for four Gedict is there. Um, so I can't really do anything with that. I mean, I would love to get that off, but no assassinate for the goblin sneak. He's first. There's fade on the air rings and the earth rings. The air ring suddenly looks pretty juicy as well. We have Kasada for a cancel, but if he comes in with Shoju, I, I'm just not going to win that conflict. So he can turn off Kasada relatively quickly and for very little investment because he doesn't really have to do anything when Shoju comes in to beat people up. Um, considering fan on Shoju and really actually attempting to defend. The danger there being, um, I mean, if he gets rid of that fan and whatever other attachments I put on afterwards, although I could start with a watch commander, um, and he could kill Shoju. So it's just one of those things. Plus, fate worse of death. He's got seven fate. Um, takes Shoju out uh, for the round, and I really like to get a big military in on something. Earth, obviously, to get the keeper back. Let's see. Nivik's thinking. All right, I had it at 1.5 this whole time. <laughs> no, I don't want to to talk so quickly, but I think it worked out okay. So I'll still get another card draw, which actually I have card advantage here, which is a little strange for me. I do have the mountain as well, um, so that's pretty nice. So he comes in Shoju. I had those worries uh, about his character getting murdered. It's air. Should have thought about this a little harder, um, given that I'm going down to three honor, but uh, and I kind of got hand blindness as well. So there's a couple factors here. I had a court games. Um, you might have had one as well, but I didn't even court games. Showed you when I had the chance. I had more cards, so I might as well have done that. Plus, I'm going to draw two more. Uh, so that was a definite misplay. I should have uh, at least attempted to court, goo, court games. Showed you. And the big thing with that would have been turn off 4G if he didn't have a court games to put it back. So I'm thinking on my attack. Um, he's got a military conflict, so... I don't really want to um, go on the attack with Kasada. Not that his military is that strong anyway, and I have swords, so I, Yusuke might be able to defend a military attack anyway. Pretty sure somebody's going to get fate worse than death, so I'm really just trying to pick you know, who. Now I'm really regretting that finger of jade um, on Yusuke. Because like I said, a fate worse than death on him is not bad, but uh, I don't want to go into meditation, so... I said, well, what do I want to attack here? Um, I have seven military. I think I can take, and some swords. I think I can take pilgrimage. So I attacked to get the keeper and the earth ring, which, you know, put me up. Um, I mean, by the time Yusuke does his stuff, it put me up 18 cards to, to 11, which is, you know, pretty decent. Um, but I have a lot of expensive attachments in my hand, so I don't know if I really actually have 11. <laughs> um Sorry, all the cards, because a lot of them are not playable, but just because they run out of money. So he defends with Kachiko, which I found to be interesting. Uh, instead of He already uses political conflict, so I guess she doesn't contribute to military at all. And then he fate with worse than death as well. So I guess Kachiko was not going to contribute on military, so uh, I guess might as well. Um, and he could have bonsider and stuff like that. 
So I dropped the skirmisher in to the conflict um, with a fate. And like I was mentioning, I had a lot of expensive things in hand. I don't know if the fate was the biggest thing. I was just, again, worried about this board every round, but his board just seemed much bigger than mine. So I didn't want to invest a card and possibly some attachments on it without having... Thing. I don't have access to the uh, iron mine or any way to stop assassination. So that's a big problem. So the ring is not going to go off, but I, at this point, I'm just, I, I just want that keeper. I thought I'd invest to get basically a skirmisher to get a keeper, which is equal to a skirmisher um, in terms of stats and better on political. And I have a political attack remaining. So he weighs the scorpion, the skirmisher, which is a problem with the skirmisher. I mean, it can grab um, favor, but it's just that one glory hurts in these kind of situations, especially against scorpion, where it can be so easily turned into a zero, zero, zero dash. So I'll drop the fate on him, and then the assassination comes, which is what I was worried about. So the second assassination in three turns. Again, not that unusual, but definitely unfortunate, dis misfortunate for me. <laughs> uh, Sketchgo is gonna gonna claim this. I'm not. Oh, uh, I don't, can't remember exactly what I do. I mean, could, you know, no, no. I I spent my last fate. This, yeah. So this turn, starting with the quote games I showed you, I just a lot of misplays on my part. I think. I wouldn't say tilting, but I, so the third way of the course scorpion comes down to ensure that I'm going to lose this conflict because I have no fate left, uh, no free sword to play. So it's just kind of over in this conflict. Plus, uh, that's the second way. So he cost me an honor on the first skirmisher. Now he cost me an honor on the second skirmisher. Uh, so you can see the board here. I'm, unless I get a fire to honor somebody, which I is possible, um, before they go and I have no fate for the reprieve even though I have two in hand so spending all that fate on that conflict just to try to get you know bigger card advantage and one keeper this wasn't wasn't worth it in the end I didn't know what cards he had so it is what it is but um yeah you can see that spending all that fate when I had decent things to do on defense just not worth it plus I ended up taking two honor loss there so I'm really dropping fast right air ring um unopposed air ring followed by you know losing so i lost five honor <laughs> in that turn without playing assassinate or anything like that it's really terrible uh, thing to do against scorpion uh so i given the shooter suki and spyglass i definitely shouldn't have bid five um but i didn't want to turn on scorpion box that's part of all the problem if you bid low that's the trap and why they have the best box in the game by far best stronghold in the game is it you know you bid uh you bid um if you bid low, it just turns on their box and they steal all the honor back. If you bid high, you get into these situations where the dishonor, the losing honor in various ways is going to take you down eventually. So I defend and I win, which is not a yay moment because I lose. <laughs> I lose at the end of this turn uh, because I defended I, and he took the fire ring from me anyway. I have no way to, and it was military, so I have no way to honor a character and I have no money for the reprieves. The reprieve would have... Um, at least staved it off a turn, but you know, showed you plus catch a go. It's going to uh, with you know fire ring just definitely gonna win the air ring on you or the fire ring or something to dishonor you. So yep, um, that was the game. So uh, well played by Nivik, definitely well played by my opponent. Um, I kind of had control of the game from turn one, even though I had a good start. I mean, can't really complain about that start against Scorpion. Um, he definitely had a lot of answers to it, but I th some better play, I think I could have turned that into something, or at least more, much more competitive game. But, you know, it's the way it goes. So I'm I'm out of this tournament, so there won't be any of these post-game commentaries, but I am streaming uh, the winner semifinal, hopefully the loser semifinal, and then the finals. I may, I may stream, somebody else may do it uh, for this. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this series.